what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel Experience Plus ROM on this particular device. The Pixel Experience comes with two separate versions one is straight up without customizations and one is with customization that is the Plus Edition. Both of them does include the G apps. By the way both of these Pixel Experience ROMs are based on OSS vendor and this is again the 16th July 2021 the latest build as of right now I'm using but after using this Pixel Experience Plus ROM for quite a while now, I would say yes. If you have been on past or previous Pixel Experience Plus ROM builds, this is technically a downgrade. Let me tell you why. Because if you go into the settings, in the security option, there is no option to actually enable the app lock over here. So the app lock has been completely removed from this particular build, the 16th July 2021 build. That's the reason why you might find this build a little bit of downgrade from the previous builds but the stability over here I have to say it's amazing and in the Android version section as you can see this is of course based on Android 11 as you are noticing. Let me go back the security patch you are getting still latest of July 5th 2021 and the baseband version over here you can see the stock kernel is pixel experience kernel and there is a build number this is again it shows 15th July over here but that's totally fine. In the system panel you will get the system updater and from here you can check for updates as you can see. And let me go back in the status bar section you will get some customizations in the network and traffic monitor. You can enable the network traffic indicator. There is the system icons and over here as you can see you get the headset Bluetooth etc icons over here. Let me go back we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar and the clock position you can change to center or something if you want to as you are noticing and by the way if you are noticing the bluetooth battery status and stuff is showing up over there so for bluetooth devices if you have some bluetooth devices the battery will show up on the status bar we have the show seconds am pm style and stuff then the battery icon status style and we have the battery percentage and stuff and we have the brightness slider you can have it on show always auto brightness and brightness control both are there so just sliding a finger on the status bar as you can see and just the brightness over here so this is very helpful for me at least and we get the quick pull down and stuff let me go back we have the button settings here we get the system navigation gestures if you go into the settings we have the edge touch area and stuff but you cannot simply increase the size of this spill bar over here but that's totally fine and we have the two button and three button navigation as well and there we get the invert layout and stuff in the settings if you're using two or three button navigations then we have this power menu option here we get the advanced reboot and let me show you if you tap on power then if you tap on restart you will get the advanced reboot you can directly reboot the recovery or fast boot like directly from here let me go back we have the menu shortcuts too over here you can have it locked down emergency etc we have the long press power button toggle torch and we have the end call by pressing the power button and automatically turn off torch option is there and you get the click to take partial screenshot and stuff. Let me go into the gestures now and here you get the swipe click screenshot and stuff and let me show you you only get the share and edit option there is no delete or scrolling option over here for taking a screenshot as you can see in the settings there is no option for the long screenshot or something if you are looking for that. We have the quickly open camera and stuff let me go back. We have the pop-up camera settings and there you get the sound effects but again we simply do not get the camera calibration or stuff like that and the default keyboard over here is Gboard of course and in the security again we do not have the app lock or something but we only have the fingerprint and the face unlock option and in the settings you get this unlock with fingerprint when the screen is off so screen off FOD is there but again there is no option for the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner or stuff like that if you are looking for it coming from AirOS or something. So yeah, those always unlock with the fingerprint scanner is just not here. Let me just first set up the face unlock and I'll show you how the face unlock works or how fast it is. Let me just click on done. Right now, let's just double tap on the status bar so that the device gets locked. And right now, I don't know why the always on display did not appear for the first time. So yeah, right now, let's just double tap over here and swipe up. So after swiping up, as you can see, it unlocks with the face unlock super fine. Let me try one more time. So as you can see, face unlock is working, but you have to double tap to wake the screen first. Then you can swipe up. Then only it will pop out the front camera and it will unlock with the face unlock. Right now, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed. Now talking about the fingerprint scanner speed from the always on display. Well, I would say, yes, it unlocks. But as you can see, sometimes I face this issue that it doesn't unlock or get stuck like this. So the fingerprint scanner experience has not been that great for me at least as you can see right now. Let me show you as you can see it unlocked super fine this time but sometimes it just gets stuck over there right now if you're noticing it's not unlocking. Okay so now it did. 
So this is the problem that I have faced. The finger scanner, when it unlocks, it's fine, but sometimes it just doesn't unlock. Maybe I have to try one or two times, then I have to double tap to the lock screen. Then I can tap the finger scanner and that will unlock the screen. So that problem I faced over here. By the way, the stock launcher over here is still the pixel launcher. So this is working super fine. Swiping up on the home screen gets you to the app drawer and swiping to the left gives you the Google's discovered page. Swiping down gets you to the quick settings panel and stuff. And we have the widgets working super fine here. No issues with that. And the whole UI stays pretty smooth and fluid with the stock launcher. No issues, but we do not have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen or stuff like that if you're looking for it. In the settings, as you can see, we only have this suggestion disabling option and stuff. They do appear a little bit later, so yeah. And yeah, you have the double tap to sleep on the status bar, but again, no double tap to sleep for the home screen, I would say. As you can see, that long I had to tap the view mid scanner to actually unlock the device. The quick settings panel, and here you can edit and add multiple toggles as you're noticing. There are a plethora of options over here. Now let me show you what I have added. We have the battery saver, the dark theme, and we have the Android 11 screen recorder. With that, you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. So that is good. Also, it shows the Bluetooth battery percentage over there if you're connected to a Bluetooth device. By the way, the sound quality via Bluetooth and the 3.5mm headphone jack is great over here. No issues I have faced with sound quality. Let me show you the other toggles. We have the hotspot, do not disturb, the data saver, and the always on display enabling or disabling option. And as you can see, you can just turn it off or on from here. Heads up, you can disable or enable, anti-flicker or disabling is there. And the nightlight toggle is there. We have the nearby shear. And the volume panel, you can like bring it just from right here and you can expand the volume panel just like this. And let me show you the other toggles. We have the live display toggle too over here. From here, you can enable this high brightness mode or the outdoor brightness mode. So that is good and we can turn it off from here if you want to. And if you somehow want to enable the auto brightness, you can just tap here, that will enable the auto brightness. Let me go into the settings and right now let me show you. This is how the settings panel looks like if you go to the networks and the mobile networks. This is very simplistic, you do have the Wi-Fi calling and stuff, you can enable it if you want to. By the way, this is how the stock dialer looks like and of course we do not have any kind of call recording option over here, but Volte calling does work super fine, you can change the like, call to the speaker or the phone if you want to. Volte calling works and view Wi-Fi works too, but no call recording option in the stock dialer. In the battery settings, this is how it looks like. If you want to see the full battery usage, you can tap on the three dots, then you have to go into the battery usage, then you can see the full battery usage. By the way, this gap you are noticing, it's because I restarted and updated my Orange Fox recovery, that's why it's not a forced reboot or something. So yeah, and we have the optimization profiles over here. So you can set per app to performance, browser, camera, dialer, game, streaming application, etc options so yeah optimization profile or thermal profiles are there and this is great and we have the battery saver the adaptive or auto battery kind of thing and we have the turn on light when charging and stuff this is for the light over here on the pop-up camera and i would say we have the full charge lasts about how long and we have the screen on time right in the bottom but there is no option to see the battery temperature or the charging cycle over here so yeah, you don't get to see those in the battery settings over here in the Pixel Express ROM, which is kind of a bummer in my opinion. Now, if you're wondering about the battery life, here are some screenshots. It gives you about six plus hours of screen on time, I would say. So the battery life is not bad at all. And it definitely gives you one day of full usage with a full charge, I would say. And the fast charging over here is also working fine. No issues if you are wondering about fast charging. In the display settings, we have the dark theme, the night light and adaptive or auto brightness. And we have the live display over here and from here again you can enable this outdoor bright sun mode to give the display too much brightness or something and we have the anti flicker or the disabling right here then we have the reading mode the color calibration you can change the rgb and you have the hue saturation intensity and contrast changing options then if you scroll down we have the styles and wallpapers now one bummer i would say that you cannot simply change the always on display clock over here this clock is what you get you can't simply change or like you don't have any customization for this lock screen clock in this particular ROM and that is kind of a bummer and again no finger bit scanner animation as you are noticing no animation happens over here whenever you are unlocking that is again kind of a bummer coming from other ROMs pretty much and we have the custom themes and you can customize or create a custom theme with these many fonts and these many icons and we get the accent colors as you can see so these are all the colors that you get there is no yellow or something as you are noticing 
so the accent color options are very minimal in my opinion customizations are very minimal all over the ui in the grid settings we get up to 5 by 5 grid and in the wallpapers you do get the live wallpapers and stuff but the wallpaper that i'm using over here is from the wallp app and i'll list it below in the description if you want it the screen timeout is there you can set it and we have the rotation settings of course you can enable one degree rotation and stuff let me scroll down we have the double tap to wake the double tap to sleep and the wake on plug you can disable it if you want to prevent accidental wake up or the pocket detection is working fine and in the lock screen you get the display media cover art then the display music visualizer and stuff and that's it let me go back from here in the sound settings we have the media call alarm etc volume and by the way this is how the volume panel looks like again and if you scroll down we have the increased ring volume and stuff then the vibrate for calls you can change and we have the phone ringtone you can change it to for sim 1 and sim 2 separately and we have the default alarm sound and stuff you can change and the dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound charging vibration etc vibrate to indicate call status this is for the in call vibrations you can enable and in the mute sound enhancer as you can see there are all these options you can set it to youth edition and with that the sound quality via the headphone jack will be amazing and you can also choose a preset like this and you can also enable the hi-fi audio option over here so if you have a really great pair of headphones or something so this is great we get all of these options so the pixel experience plus in my opinion is a very minimalistic rom still it has a little bit of customizations but it's just simply not enough for me personally i would totally say that now let me show you the stock camera over here this is the camera that you get by default and the ui is just very basic and this is the old kind of Google camera that you get so I don't really like using this camera that's the reason why I had to flash magic and with that I have installed the ANX camera version 185R if you don't know how to install it check out the card right there or check out the description and again for flashing this ROM you can check out the description for the flashing guide and in the video settings over here you get the 4K 60fps option in the ANX camera and if you switch the front camera as you can see you can shoot up to 1080p 30fps and all the lenses over here are working totally fine the 0.6x lens and the 2x telephoto lens both are working fine or three of the lenses are totally working fine even portrait mode and stuff everything is working super fine over here except the 48 megapixel mode i would say the pro mode also is there so anx camera is not a problem over here you can also install google cameras and stuff if you want to now the drm info status if it's l1 for you it will stay l1 over here and the safety net also works super fine over here no issues with that but if you have broken DRM info permanently or the DRM certification permanently, then it will be L3 just like I did. So that's the reason why my DRM certification over here on this ROM is L3. But if you have not broken it again, DRM info shows as L1, it should be L1 over here too. Now as this is the OSS vendor based ROM, the performance over here is just amazing. And I would say the RAM management of the Pixel Experience Plus ROM is one of the best out there. And the RAM management, I have had no issues. All the apps stays in memory by the way this is how the recent panel looks like you can take a screenshot from right here and you can go to the split screen or something if the app supports it i guess as you can see the split screen is there and if you go all the way to the left you can clear all the apps from here again no app lock no lock screen clock changing option no fod icon animation or no fod icon customization i would say so this is what pixel experience plus looks like this is pretty much again the pixel experience that you might be looking for which does not offer a lot of customizations again and by the way if you're looking for the benchmarks here are the android and geekbench score for your reference and here is a cpu stress test that i have done over here on this rom okay google as you can see google assistant is working flawlessly over here with the voice trigger let me try one more time hey google as you can see again google assistant is not a problem with the voice trigger so that was it about the Pixel Experience Plus ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro. Let me in the comments what do you guys think. This is Cheetah from KDNT signing off for today. And please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And please share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest Pixel Experience Plus ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro. Bye now.